Hello everyone, my name is Tokriv and this is Master of Orion. This um, game just recently came into early access. It's being made by Wargaming Labs. And uh, yeah, it is a 4X game based on the excellent series of the past, Masters of Orion. Um, it had three games. The third one has always been pretty much criticized for being not in the spirit of the other two, but Master of the Rhine 2 is lauded as one of the best 4X games of all times. And now it's being resurrected, rebooted, uh, remade, sort of, in a different style a little bit. Of course, updated to the modern era that it has um, quite the decent graphics. So it's a 4X game uh, in the vein of... Uh, it's a 4X game in the vein of Civilization. You want to... X Explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. That's what the four X's stand for. Um, let's just go into the single player. We're gonna play a new campaign. Uh, yeah, play against computer. Alien from the cloudy planet Altair. The proud Alkari are an old race of avian hominids. So these are the Alkari. Although well known for their peaceful disposition, they are fierce in combat. And will rarely back out of a fight if they believe they have just cause. Lofty, inflexible, the Sky Lord honorable. Rules over the flock, uncontested. He is the de facto commander of all Alkari fleet. Just, just a quick second, because I'm trying to make this um, for the introduction. I think I'm going to put the. Oh my God! No, that's way too loud, people. What, what did you do? It suddenly reset. Yeah, it's. <laughs> That's weird. That's a weird bug. When I hover over the SFX and the ambient, the music will in suddenly increase in volume, which is really, really, really weird. Anyway, um, I'll put up the voices again once uh, we've chosen who to pick. Anyway, there are currently six of the ten standard races in uh, development in the game. And you can even start a custom race at some point as well. Anyway, the Alkari are bird people. The Bulrathi are bear people. The humans are people people. The Mershan are cat people. You have the Cylons, which are kind of traditional alien people. And the Sakra, which are lizard people. It's one way of saying it. Anyway, the Alkari are lofty and flexible, honorable. They start with artifacts on their home world, which allows faster research. They start with a stronger beam defense. And they start off with physics. Uh, the Bulrathi start off with a mineral rich home world. They will have a high tolerance to. Well, a tolerance to high gravity, and they start off with physics as well. The humans will start off with government tech. They will get improved negotiations, easier to make others accept deals, but they are bad at counter espionage. So that's a counter. They're diplomatic, stubborn, and charismatic. The Bulrathi are headstrong, territorial, and ferocious. The Marshan, fearless, warlike, proud. So basically, the Bulrathi, the Marshan, are definitely yeah. There are some, there are plenty of warlike races here. Cat person. So large homeworld size, so it allows more people. It can transform deserts into grassland planets for the Uber planet. They get an extended barracks, so more p more. Units can be put in a barracks, marines, and they start off with engineering. The Cylons are brilliant, unsympathetic, and creative. Their homeworld size is also large. They get the 50% bonus research from population. Uh, gravity tolerance for low gravity. And they start off with government as well. Finally, the Sakra. They can transform swamp planets into highly improved tropical planets. Their food consumption is less than normal races, and they start off with biology. Um, I'd like to play as either the Bulrathi or the humans, so I think we're going to try the Bulrathi. I usually very often play humans in 
uh, space like Civ games. And then let's turn the voices back up. And the music slightly as well. There you go. Single player. New game. Hailing from the harsh Ursa system is home to the Bulrathi. A ferocious warrior race committed to the preservation of nature. Fearless and brutal in combat, they rely on their strength to overcome opponents, while their heavily armored fleets withstand wave after wave of enemy attacks. Fiercely territorial, they are usually reluctant to strike the first blow, but they will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone who wanders into their domain. Their rich spiritual life revolves around the Hag, an elder who speaks for nature itself. It was the will of the Hag that pushed the Bulrathi into space as they sought to place the entire galaxy under their protection by so, any means necessary. So the Bulrathi are, well, ferocious and very strong in combat. Not, not, not sure if that reflects in uh, combat ability as much. But they're more defensive race. They don't like to start the attack. So they're more like, hey, dude, you're coming into our stuff. Um, anyway, we're going to play a spiral map. We're going to play on a large map because I like larger maps. Galaxy Age, let's leave that average. Maximum amount of AI opponents so we get everyone against us. There's only one, one difficulty right now. Let's do a random seat. You can also do some advanced settings as well. Racial traits, balanced starting conditions. I don't even need that per se. But yeah, it's it's a space game. It's usually very balanced at the start, so to speak. You'll start with the same, just slightly different tailored beginnings for your sieve. Other than that, you usually start with like one planet, stuff like that. Anyway, we are going to be the master of Orion. Yeah, I hope that, um, personally, I really love big maps in space games. This is why I'm looking forward to Stellaris a lot. Because Stellaris will have a shit ton of space to work with. A lot of stars. Devoted for millennia to the conservation of their home planet Ursa, the hulking Bulrathi are a fierce kin. The will of the spirits is revealed to them through the Hag, an elder shamanic guide who speaks for all living things. I just hope this doesn't she get has flagged, now you know. On the Emperor of the Bulrathi to take this message beyond Ursa to ensure the survival of the wilds and put the whole galaxy under their protection by any means necessary. But according to uh, I did get permission from Wargaming to use to make videos on this on YouTube. All hail the pride and honor of the Bulrathi, the thickest of furs and the sharpest of claws. I'm humbled you still remember old Guru. As your High Chancellor, I shall provide assistance on any and all matters of the Empire. I've seen more than my share of battles, and hope my experience will help you on your campaigns. Okay, thanks. But yeah, it's usually stuff like um, videos and music sometimes get flagged. But this is um, actually a large. I think this is a little bit larger than the test game I played. I think that got stuck back to medium then, maybe. Regardless, we are over here in the Ursa system. Ursa minor, Ursa major. Blue white stars. Hottest stars make it extremely difficult to find habitable plans around them. Their planets are mineral rich, though. This is a medium sized Terran rich planet. Which, with gems. What do the gems do? A credits boost to the colony. And anyway, we're gonna start off with a colony ship. I would like to get a little bit less research, a little bit more food. I'd like to get more people. Anyway, um, here's the planet, so managed structures, we can see our home world, it's Terran, it has, you can see the lights lighting up in the dark, in the night, you can also see all these ships flying around the planet, a lot more at night, by the way, it appears, or, what is that, we have our capital, we have a star base, and this would be, one would assume, yeah, it's a marine barracks for units, 
Prone defenses. Ah, and Marines and mechanized infantry tasked with fighting off invaders who may try to conquer the planets. Credits. So the gems are giving us two credits. Is that it? Wow. It can only have 11. Planet size limit is, ele is 12. Inhabitable cells is 11. Okay. Result of industrial waste in a colony. Each biome type can withstand certain maximum pollution level before degrading. Several structures can be built to clean up pollution and keep the environment stable. Anyway, um, so yeah. With Master of Orion, you can adjust your pops according to this. You have a drop-off on how effective uh, each um, worker can be. So, you have farmers, you have production workers and you have scientists currently we're not doing a lot of science but i'm perfectly fine with that actually for the first turn it doesn't actually matter how much you have into production well actually you need one person in production because you start building a colony ship at almost done basically so the first turn is actually going to be you can trust me on this Exploration is paramount to our success. To move a fleet, left click it to select it, then right click a destination, a planet, warpoint, star, or anomaly. To split a fleet, left click a fleet and select any ship you want to split in the selected fleet and order them to move. So we're going to take a scout and explore our other planet here. Ursa Prime, it's a gas giant, which means it shall not be able to be colonized. Okay, thanks. So we see Pomptina has four planets around it, which really makes me want to explore it. I'm going to take the scout to that warp point. I actually should have sent my scout to uh, a different warp point and my frigate to a different system because a frigate is usually slower. We're going to explore Mulban. Our pride and honor. What new trick should the scrutineers scrounge up? So this is Kurok, basically. And here are some researches that we can do. So we could research government, biology, engineering, electronics, or advanced magnetism. And there's, of course, a full tech tree. And it's a pretty big tech tree. Holy crap. Evolving techs. It's probably just... Um, yeah, the end. Wow, this completely split off the last two trees. After you get Optronics, Optronics is the last one that branches off into both sides of this tree. Everything else appears to be completely split. Maybe there's a difference between the two on how to govern the uh, this thing, the, the your civilization, your race. Anyway, um, government. Unlocks research lab and government support facility, which increases morale, which is good to have people stay happy. We have the neutron blasters in the automated factory already unlocked. Biospheres, hydroponic farms on biology, which is just more food. Anti-missile rockets and destroyers. I'd actually like to get engineering. I must stick out my claws on this matter. To advance the game, click next turn. Let's do it. You can trust me on this. Our first colony ship is ready. We're probably going to send them to Misha. But I'd first like to know what is actually going to be there before I actually send the colony ship through. So now we have production available here in uh, Ursa. It did take people off of the planet. So, let's see. That means 13 turns and 7 production. I think I'd like to get an automated factory to enhance my production. So we're now getting some... We have some pollution, but that might be uh, scrapped or scrubbed later on. Anyway, that's our turn. It, um, usually in the early turn it goes fast. Now that's annoying. Where the hell is it going? I don't know. But this is... The timing is really bad on this one. Yeah. 
Um, I'm gonna wait with you. I'm not sending you anywhere yet. Okay, this is a much safer location right now, so... For now, I'm gonna put them on this warp point. Just to be sure. See? That ship is now here, so I'm gonna turn around, because otherwise... I'm gonna get my scout blown up. And you are going to explore this planet. Hopefully it's not a gas giant. Yeah, it's a gas giant. Well, that's my stupid luck then. These are not gas giants. They look a lot smaller. So we're going to go this way now. Threatening fleet detected. I think he's coming to Ursa 2. I wonder if we can cross each other on the middle of a... Uh, it even has a moon here. It's a tundra planet, abundant. Uh, we're gonna send our colony ship this way. And you will go he here. Hello, Lyr. That's Mulban Prime. It is a um, asteroid field. So we can put up, build up a mine over there. You know what? I am going to turn back around now because you cannot change direction inside the warp what do we have here a toxic planet oh dark quartz um, production boost to the colony okay i hope this can be terraformed because that just doesn't look very good eight people three to one reasonable production as well yeah we're going to uh Go to Turktus Prime. Oh, and we discovered Morig, but we have no way of getting there. Because this is a spiral galaxy. Um, it's very, very likely that the routes are only going to go this way around. In a circle, rather than a lot of combinations. Anyway, you're going to cross this way. I'm just going to assume the pirates are on their way to Ursa 2. Let's explore this. A fleet needs orders. So you are going to go this way. To Nurb. And you are going to settle on... Us. This is important. One of our colony ships... Sheeps. <laughs> has reached a viable planet. Colonizing plants from different planetary systems is a good way to expand the range of our scanners. Choose plants with good biomes to boost population growth and high mineral richness to increase production. To establish a new colony, select a fleet with at least one colony ship and select colonize from fleet actions. Well, we're going to colonize. Here we go. That does look a little bit like... Um, yeah, it is indeed ice. Huh. So we land and we're going to have a beautiful time, hopefully, here. We're bear people, so let's be honest. We can easily withstand the cold of the Tundra planet. We're not polar bear planets, but... So we could grow, we could produce things. I think I would like to build up an automated factory first, and then switch my production guy over to food to start growing it. And my homeworld is done with its automated factory next turn. We have our automated factory on Earth 2. The population of a colony affects research, food, and production output. Signing population to work on food will speed up population growth on that colony. While doing so, the production or research will reduce the ETA of buildings or research times, respectively. You can assign your population manually or define a colony focus, which will distribute the population automatically. We've already been doing that, so... So we now have nine production going on. I can only build... Wow, not a lot. Um, let's start building a frigate an extra frigate um i'm fine with this right now if i put another guy on food it will just give diminishing returns so that's fine a fleet needs orders i'm going to swap to that new area apparently he's oh we've discovered misha prime it's a swamp planet and We've also, there we go, we have built or researched engineering, a threatening fleet, threatening fleet detected? No, that is this one, yeah. Oh, okay, 
removes the one. We've learned a new trick, thanks to our scrutineers. Okay, so we've discovered engineering which allows us to build destroyers and anti-missile rockets. So we're going to upgrade the frigates with could be of aid in our campaign. With anti-missile uh, rockets. We're going to go and research biology. This will help us grow Turktus Prime as well. This guy is done. Why is this one red? Ginnum. This warplane is red for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, we've discovered here a tundra planet with gold. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date in the future. I'll see you guys later.